Um, record. Hey, everyone. Appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Lori. Good to have you on. So uh, appreciate everyone jumping on this webinar today. We're so excited because we have an awesome young man with us. I'm going to heavily say awesome young man. I think he's about 18 months younger than me or something like that. And uh, so this is, um, for those of you who don't know this young man, he is my baby brother. Um, couldn't be more brother. There's Sandy from Kentucky, Gary. So uh, couldn't be more my baby brother if, if he'd have been born to the same mom and same Agreed. dad as I was. I agree. I agree. Uh, so anyway, I just love this man and his wife and uh, just appreciate them so much. Our paths crossed in what only could be described as, you know, yeah. God, God just having to do with our lives. You know, yeah. our, our steps are ordered. And we just appreciate him so much. So Gary has uh, a really um, great uh, story mm -hmm. as a seller on Amazon, but he also has great story in life and also a great story in uh, business long term. You know, he's long term in business before he even found Amazon and found out what Amazon could do for his life. And so basically what we're going to do today is we're going to just turn him loose. Now, if you have questions for Gary, I want you to just jump on chat and make sure you put those in chat. And I'm going to try to be monitoring uh, Facebook uh, live as well to see the questions there. Um, and I'm not, not super, super good about multitasking with that. So hopefully we'll get to those. Um, and also um, if you have, things you want him to drill down on um, that you want him to expand on as he's sharing uh, their story and what has happened to them. I want you to, to put that in the chat or put that in Facebook and we'll pick up those and feed those to Gary as we go along. But Gary, I am so, so excited. We had a lot of interest in this webinar, you know, um, so uh, I know that it's going to be good. I'm just so thrilled, so thrilled that you're my friend and uh, that you're my, my brother, my baby brother, all right? And uh, so, so thrilled to have you on this webinar today. And so we're just gonna turn you loose. Basically, I titled this Blasting Doubts and Blowing Up Sales Records because that's what Gary does. I mean, when he walks into the room, he's like John Wayne, you know, and he's getting both of the six shooters out and he's just blowing up the doubts. I mean, he's just blasting away at those. And then uh, the next thing you know, you're blowing up your own sales records because he just has that ability to speak into people's lives. So I just want you to give your ears and your heart right now to Gary Ray, and we just appreciate him so much. I'm gonna be jumping in with a couple of things pertaining to Amazon as we go along <clears throat> and uh, showing you some of, some of the proof of concept because this man has been doing amazing things. So Gary, so excited to have Gary Ray with us today. Thank you, Gay, very much. I, obviously, it's an it's an ego boost anytime you get asked to to speak. And I used to do some public speaking for hire, so I always found it enjoyable. But when I do these events, as I sent you the message about an hour ago to pray for me, when I do these events, I'm always mindful of those that are hurting uh, because I know what that's like. I know what it's like to even want to commit suicide. I know what it's like to be down and out. I know what despair feels like. And when you feel that, it makes you then want to get out of that and want to succeed and want to prosper. So I'm reminded of this story, and I'll start it off with this. There's a man, as the story goes, that there was a major flood coming, and water was up to about his chest. And he was fearful that he was going to drown, but he was praying, and he was asking God to please save him, please deliver him. So this boat comes by, and this man says, get in the boat, man. It's flooding. You're going to drown. Get in. And the man said, no, I'm, I'm praying the Lord's going to take care of me, but thank you. So the boat goes off. So the water gets up to about here. Another boat comes by and it says, listen, man, you better get in here. It's flooding and you're going to drown. He said, listen, I'm praying the Lord's going to take care of me. Thank you. So the boat goes off. So the water gets up to about here. And I mean, now he's holding his nose up like this to keep from drowning. So this helicopter comes over and drops this ladder down. And the pilot with a loudspeaker says, grab a hold of the ladder and we'll rescue you. And the man waves him off and says, the Lord will deliver me. He'll take care of me. So the helicopter leaves. So the water comes on up. The man drowns. So the man's at, 
at heaven. He's at the pearly gates and he's there with St. Peter and, and he's upset. He tells St. Peter, I wouldn't have been upset, by the way, but he tells St. Peter, he says, I don't understand. I was praying. I had faith that you would deliver me, yet you let me drown. And St. Peter looks at him and says, listen, we sent you two boats and a helicopter. What more do you want? And you know, I'm mindful when I do this broadcast or like this, that this very well could be a boat or a helicopter for you in your life. You could be suffering from despair of marriage or health or finances or whatever. And you could be ask, actually wanting a sign. And this today could be just that. And, and I approach these very seriously. I, I don't get any money for it. No affiliate link here. I don't want anything. The Lord's been good to me in my life. So these are just my way of trying to give back to society in, in some small way. So first, a little bit of my story, because I could never start a presentation without people knowing a little bit about who they're listening to. I'm an average guy from an average town with an average education. I made uh, B's and C's in schools, nothing special about me at all. I was raised in church. I was raised, rocked in the gospel cradle, as they call it. I uh, spent my childhood going to church and revivals all the time. A lot of the people I was around growing up were very cynical. Were they, they were very negative. They loved the Lord with all their heart, but as far as business or prosperity, they had negative things to say about rich people or negative things to say about succeeding. And I always found that very confusing. How could they serve a God that owns a cattle on a thousand hills, the one who made gold and diamonds for his bunch, not Satan? How could they serve him yet have such a pessimistic view toward life here on this earth? I never quite understood that. And I today, I'm around a lot of people that have that mindset. I don't. I, I really, to be honest with you, at a young age, I never had that mindset. I've had uh, seven surgeries. I'm blind in my left eye. I have a right hand that's messed up. Uh, and Sandy, who is on here today, is a friend of ours and used to do a run our prepping and shipping part of our business. She's been around me a lot, and she can attest to that. There's absolutely nothing special about me at all other than I always had a strong desire to succeed. I got in the insurance business when I was 18 and a half years old. I didn't go to college. I went straight to work, and uh, when I started in the insurance business, I had a man training me, and he taught me all these little tools to do. And my dad, who has been deceased now for 15 years, my dad was probably the person I was the closest to in life. And my dad had a huge influence on my life, and I'm forever thankful for that. But again, my dad was a cynical, negative kind of person. But that doesn't mean he wasn't a terrific man. He was. My dad was kind of jealous of the man that was training me in the insurance business. And, and dad had a lot of negative things to say about him at times. But I chose to rule that out because I... I'm a faith-believing kind of person. I'm an optimist. I go after Moby Dick in a rowboat and take the tartar sauce with me. I believe the glass is half full, not half empty. I believe it is rising. It's filling up, not going down. And I'm just like that. So I trained with this guy, and he taught me what to say and how to say. I practiced in front of the mirror, constantly in front of my bathroom mirror in that mobile home that I lived in at the time. And I practiced what to say and how to say it. I'm 55 now. That was 37 years ago. And I practiced this over and over. People in my family actually laughed at me, and that's the truth. It hurt my feelings. They laughed at me, thought it was funny that I was practicing in front of a mirror what to say. I went out in the field of sale, went out door to door, Highway 69, Fordsville, Kentucky. That's where I started literally knocking on doors. The first day out, I was so nervous, I actually threw up. That's how scared I was. <laughs> I was terrified. I had one suit that I had borrowed my mom's credit card to buy the suit and uh, thankful that she let me do that, her pennies card. And I went out at the end of the first week, I had broke the, uh, the company sales record. I had sold the most that had ever been sold in a week for wow. a first week agent or for any agent. And wow. I was very glad of that. At the end of two years, <clears throat> I had a closing ratio of one out of every 2.6 people I called on. I made a sale. The wow. national average was one in five. Wow. I currently today have an agent that works for me today that holds the company sales record for the most ever sold for a career. In the last six years, he's been the highest salesman in the nation wow. for the company that we work with. And he works for me now. I'm still in the insurance business. So we got into this Amazon business purely by uh, a blessing or by chance, if you want to call it that. I've got to also throw this in because it's unfair if I don't. Uh, do I have a lot of things going against me? Yeah, I do. I was sexually molested as a child. 
Uh, and you think, why in the world would you throw that out there? That's embarrassing. You know, let's get real. Every one of us are two steps of insanity. There ain't none of us that's as together as we act. None of us, including me. Nobody is as positive or as happy as they act. So let's just get real. We're all battling our demons. We're all, we all have our trials. We all have our troubles. We all have our tribulations. And if you just learn to get real and understand that, then you understand that everybody that's prosperous out here, sports, athletes, or in the boardroom, every one of them are battling something. Every one of them have got dysfunctional members of their family. They've all got problems somewhere. And I'm no exclusion to that at all. So when we, so that's a little story on me. We have five kids, six grandkids. Life is good. And Sandy, who knows us well, she knows some problems that we're battling in our life now. A personal, you just can't, you got to kind of be like a duck and be like, let water just roll off your back. Because if you don't, you're going to spend all your life in misery. And there's just no sense in that. You can, right. Let me tell you something. You're living in the United States of America. I recently read that there's more wealth in America today, or actually it was in 2017, than there was in the entire planet in 1920. Come on. If you can't prosper and succeed in America Come now, on. you would assure not made it in the old days. This is a wonderful, prosperous time. If there ever was a time for you to believe in yourself, to invest, it is today. Uh, whether it's in this business or any business at all, this is absolutely a great time to prosper. Here's how we got into the Amazon business. My wife loves to shop. And I always did say if I could find a job where she could shop, she'd make a fortune. Well, believe it or not, this actually happened one night. It came up on Facebook. I clicked it. I watched the videos. Again, I'm an optimistic person. So I signed up in the group. Gay, the, the lady on the other end of this camera here, she was my very first coach. And you're talking about the Lord sending us a blessing. He did when we met her. And I, but again, I'm optimistic. I'm somebody that just approaches things like, let me give you, let me give you, let me give you a real life example happened between Gay and I. Gay and I had never met. We just chatted a little bit. And Gay had a huge amount of product that she had bought. Uh, I mean, it was a lot of product and she and I were chatting one night and I told her, if you ever come across any buys and they're large, let me know. So she calls me one morning, I think it might've been on a Thursday morning. I can't remember. And she said, listen, there's a certain shoe store that's going out of business, more product there than me and Colleen can buy. Are you interested? I said, yes. Again, I had never met Colleen and I had never met Gay. And I said, yeah, I trusted. I had faith. I said, Yes. So she went down and she sent me a message later on that day. And she said, how much money would you like to spend? And I said, just buy all you can buy and we'll take care of it. I'm interested. I want it. So she comes down. So she calls me back, tells me how much it is. I literally, and she can tell you this, I literally get in my vehicle and I head on an eight hour drive out to Missouri to where she was, met her out there, picked up the material. But on the way out there, I'm talking with her on the phone and I said, if you have any other stuff you would like to sell, I would be interested. Again, she has a large quantity of stuff. So, or did at that time. So she tells me about this other surplus stuff that she had. And so immediately I'm telling my wife back home. Now my wife, uh, she is different in her mindset. And, and if she was here today, she would tell you that. Yes. Yeah, so totally would be understandable. So immediately I believed gay. And if gay says it's good, that's all I need. I've never met her, but I'm a believer like that. But see, a lot of you can't do that. A lot of you, your filter is negative. You have a negative filter. You, you, you would demand a bacteria count on the milk of human kindness. I mean, you, you, some people are like a raised on a lemon and weaned on a pickle. I mean, they just doubt everything. I'm not like that. I have found out there's never been a statue ever erected to a critic. Right. And I'm not going to be a critic. I'm optimistic. But let me tell you, I'm around a lot of people that's not like that. And I bet you are too. And I bet they're having an influence on your life. You've got to rise above it. You've got to not let them get to you. Mm -hmm. So Gay tells me about this other thing that she has, $10,000. So I immediately tell my wife on the other end, wire her an additional $10,000. So I showed up at Gay's house paid for the shoes she bought. It was thousands of dollars, bought another $10,000 worth of another item, loaded it all up in the truck, headed back home. We made great money out of it. Yay. Made great money out of it because she got a spread from what she paid for it to what she sold it to us. Now here's my point that I'm telling you all of this. 
this is how successful people succeed. And, and this is why non-successful people don't succeed. Some people believe that the system's rigged against them. They believe that it has something to do with a silver spoon or great education. You know, if you read my resume, there would be nothing on my resume that impressive. But I've always been proud to believe that most people that read my resume, I make more money than they do. And I have, I've made a six-figure income for the last 25 years. And it's not because of anything ingenious on my part. It's because I like to go to church, I like to live good, and I love to work, and I do not enjoy a lot of things in life that other people enjoy. Uh, alcohol or drugs or things of this nature, I, these are not things that appeal to me. I like to work, I like to make money, and I, and I like to do good stuff with it. With six grandkids, I like to give to charity. Let me tell you something, I know people that won't give to charity, and you know why they won't give to charity? They won't because they believe a certain percentage of it goes to other people, that it doesn't go to charity. That doesn't bother me at all. I, I don't look at, does my money go 100% to all of the charity? I look at it as there is a God and he keeps a record. And he's looking at my good heart, not the good hearts on the other end. So I don't always give or do things and, and, and try to determine if on the other end it's going to be uh, pure and clean. I try to make sure that if I'm prospering, I give back, such as what I'm doing today here on this uh, broadcast. So we found the, the program. <clears throat> we signed up. Gay was our first coach on the other end. We, for about the first five and a half, six weeks, we turned off the television. We watched No Dancing with the Stars. We devoted all free time to learning this business, learning all the apps, learning the inventory labs. Pause right Please. there, Gary, and just say, that now he's, got, he's going to be dropping just absolute gold nuggets here. And you guys have to, um, you have to let these go down. He's, he's making it very conversational. But these are things that... Um, We've said over and over again, success leaves clues. So what he's about yeah. to say is one of your biggest clues to success and one of the things that most people won't do, which is why there's only a few out of any given group of people that's going to succeed. But it's not because, as he said, it's not because you know he's more brilliant or more gifted or that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What he's about to say, any single one of us, can do. Go ahead, Gary. That's absolutely the truth. And you were the very first one to show us some of these tools, like a repricer, for example, things of that nature. And, and you have to do these tools. And by the way, grab a piece of paper and a pen as we're rattling through these, because I have a tendency to talk fast. And I have to, because we're only going to be on here a certain length of time. So right. jot these things down, watch the replay if, net, if possible with a, a paper and pen in hand so you can jot these things down. So we shut down the world as much as we could on what I'd call pleasure time. We devoted all of our pleasure time. And again, I approached this just like I did the insurance business. I took the insurance business and I practiced in front of the mirror. I learned my script. I learned what I was supposed to say. I learned what I was supposed to say if the customer said no. I learned all that. Well, I did the same thing in the Amazon business. I approached the same thing. I watched all the videos. I learned all the stuff. I took notes. But I never watch this stuff through the filter of negativism. And see, that's the difference. Many people, it's really hard for them, Gay, to learn because they process everything through the filter of negativism. And let me tell you what I think a lot of this is. A lot of people, uh, Gay, and I share this with, with all of your members and with all my friends out there, a lot of people have what I call AIDS. They don't have the blood disorder AIDS, the physical disorder, but they have a worse form of AIDS. They have a mental AIDS. They have an attitude in a destructive state. They have been polluted. They've been infected. Some of them from birth, some of them in the last eight or 10 years. They've had a deluge of negativism in their mind, and they literally have a, a condition which can cause divorce, bankruptcy, even death, and it's AIDS. It's an attitude in a destructive state, and you have to learn how not to get AIDS and the way you don't get AIDS is you flush people out of your life that are cancerous, that are tumorous. Right. You get people out of your life that are destructive. We were sitting in a restaurant in Memphis, Tennessee with Gay and Colleen, my wife and I, and Gay was having like a brief counseling session with me and it was worth a million dollars. She told me about a particular person in my life after I told her a lot of details that I needed to get out of my life because this person was cancerous and they were giving me AIDS. And I did. I prayed about it and I did. I put 
uh, emphasis on it and I got them out of my life. So back to my point here about Amazon. But that was very important what I just said. If you don't get nothing else out of today's program, make sure you understand. Don't get AIDS. If you have AIDS, learn how to treat it. Mm -hmm. Stay away from this mental disorder that can destroy. You need to understand that the biggest helping hand you will ever have will come at the end of your own sleep. You need to understand if it's to be, it's up to me. There is no government. There's nobody going to come bail you out and give you a wonderful life. It is up to you. And if I can do it and get, have you ever heard Gay's complete story? Many of you probably haven't because she probably wouldn't want to share a lot of it. Let me tell you something. This lady had her teeth kicked in. She absolutely got gut punched in life, but she did not feel sorry for herself. She did not go, oh, bless my heart, woe is me and suck her thumb and go, why? She didn't do that. She chose to turn herself around and get herself back up. And you do know the story about her paying off an $80,000 mortgage, um, that was actually the very first year that she and I started knowing each other. So I got to watch all that transpire, the live videos of them actually going to the bank and paying the mortgage. I was watching all those and Colleen even got in on the act and we all were glad, so glad to see her in on the act as well. So back to the, the point here, we started going through all the videos, learning all the tools before we ever bought anything. And when we went out buying, uh, or my wife would go out buying, she would send me texts and she'd say, should I buy one or should I buy two? And I said, listen, follow the program. The program is we buy a top one to 5%, preferably top 1%. If it ranks good and it's profitable, 30% or more, pull the trigger on it. So as she would go out and do this more and more, because her confidence was really low, she was afraid to spend the money. And if she would go into a Walmart, for example, and would spend three or $400, that would cause her stress. And I tell her, don't do that. We set the money aside to build this business. So just trust it. It will work. So when the sales started coming in, her confidence level started just to soar. And mine was already there. I knew it would work because I had watched the video. I had done the math. And math does not lie. One plus one does equal two. So I knew this would work. I had total confidence that it did. But understand, there's other businesses outside the insurance business that I've done as well that the Lord's also blessed me at and I've succeeded at. So I understand success is intentional. Success leaves clues. Success is duplicatable. When you watch, but I'm going to tell you something. If you're watching this video today going, yeah, if I, if I made what you made, I'd be happy too. See, you're cynical. If you do that kind of stuff, you'll never succeed. And I just need to tell you that right now because you're probably not going to meet nobody that'll just tell you like it is. You've got to snap out of that feeling sorry for yourself. You've got to get out of that thinking, oh, bless my heart. Life's been so rough on me. The more you do that, all of these little strategies, gay and other people in this group will be trying to teach you. They'll all be null and void and they'll just... You know, the Bible talks about seed being sown, and it says some seed is sown on the rocks, some seed is sown on good ground. you got to ask yourself, are you rock or are you good ground? Are you thick-headed as a rock and nothing can get through to you? Or are you good soil that if seed lands on, you can take that seed and prosper and grow with it? Because let me tell you, you might be the problem. You could be the very region you've not experienced more happiness and success. It could be that it's you. And if it's you, you can change. Nobody is stuck with who they are. Let me tell you something. If you go a thousand miles from here, you're still you. I was on a cruise ship one time in Alaska. And I remember I was standing up on the front of this cruise ship. And I was looking up at this eagle, first bald eagle I'd ever seen. It was soaring around. And I was just tears. I was just so overwhelmed that a little country boy from Kentucky could ever get to do that. And all of a sudden it just hit me just like that. No matter where you go, there you are. Yep. And that's the truth. You can't run from you. You are who you are. So be a good person, be good hearted person, but learn how to just be optimistic and believe things will work. So we started retail arbitrage. And she was able to go do it most every day. I wasn't. I would do it of the evenings or night times or weekends or if I could squeeze in a day here and there or if I had an appointment in Paducah, Kentucky, 150 miles away, I'd try to squeeze in maybe a, a hit of RA on the way home or vice versa, that kind of thing. And we learned how to do this. We learned what days of the week that certain Walmart stores had their big markdowns and what days of the week they didn't. We kept a list. We had an Excel spreadsheet and we would just keep a list. And this is a valuable thing for those of you that want to do RA. Learn when these stores have their markdowns. I would write the store manager's names down. I would look them up on Facebook and send them friend requests. So I developed a catalog of friend requests of store managers at 
Walmart. And still to this day, I'm friends with these people on Facebook. I see their children, so on and so forth. So we started developing this list of being able to work like a 150 mile circle of our house. And I was very glad that at the end of our very first 12 months in this business, we made over a hundred grand net. And that was after all expenses. That didn't shock me. I anticipated that probably would happen if we was able to buy enough. When we first got started, we were RAN, no OAN at all at that time, just RAN. And we realized real quick, in order for us to scale up, we needed help. So we, there was a, a friend of ours, actually, she's a member of this group now, and I'm so glad she is. She couldn't be in a better group than gay group, Sandy Brooks. And Sandy is on here today. Hi, Sandy. And Sandy was a neighbor of ours, a friend of ours. We went to church together, little bitty thing. And she had uh, four children, hard worker. And I had a feeling she could learn this. So she started working, prepping and shipping, first just prepping and then boxing and then shipping. And it wasn't long till she learned inventory lab. So it wasn't, I don't know, two or three months into this that we turned it all over to her. She could prep, ship, do the inventory lab. She could do every bit of it. And okay. all we so, were so able to do just in. a second, Gary, excuse me, Go just a second, because he's just, he's just dropping knowledge bomb right here, okay? So some of you are going to skip over it because he's like, you know, Sandy's a friend, somebody, you know, went to church with, et cetera, et cetera. But here's what he, he recognized. Okay, we, we reach this level. We've got to have help. That's what he said. We've got to have help. The only way to expand up into the next level was to invest in a person yeah that investment in a person re rewarded them multiple times so don't be afraid to do that a lot of times you're your own limitation because you're like i've got to do every single step of it myself i can't trust anyone to do it as well as i can you know there's a big underlying theme here that gary keeps hitting on and it's that trust factor he lives that positive life because there's a trust factor. I can trust, and it turned out he could trust Sandy to do that. And because of that, now, listen to the story, they're going to go up a whole nother level. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, here's what happened, Gary. Thank you for slowing me down there because I was about to speak through that. We were averaging about $30,000 a month, us buying, us prepping, us shipping. We hired Sandy and started her off at $10 an hour. She had no timesheet. She knew roughly the hours we wanted her to work, when to come in and go home, but she didn't have to tell us. She was a next door neighbor, lived half a mile away. So she didn't have to report in like that. So that was a big perk for her. She kind of got to work from home, even though it was at our location. So we started Sandy off at $10 an hour. And within a couple of months, uh, when she started doing it all, it was $12 an hour. Some people immediately, and I mean, I knew people in the group that were telling me this. I said, how in the world could you, I had relatives, friends of ours, even church members of ours, but how in the world could you afford to pay her $12 an hour? Well, all you guys do the math on this. We were doing 30000 a month, and I knew all we needed to do was sell an additional $10,000, and that would pay Sandy's salary. So an additional $10,000 a month in sales, we wouldn't have to prep or ship it. A neighbor gets a great job and gets to stay close to her wonderful children, Owen, Jacob, and Rebecca, my nieces and nephews. And it was just a win-win. So we went from 30000 a month to 60000 a month within about 40 days. So we doubled our sales, and it only cost me $10,000 a month in sales to pay her entire salary. So we profited another $20,000 a month in sales by taking $10,000 in sales and paying her. But see, I am blown away at the people that can't grasp Right. They, their cynicism is so thick. I use that symbol as a filter. It is so thick they can't grasp these things. And they can't grasp the insurance business either, knocking door to door. And they, they just can't grasp these things. And they, they can't grasp buying semis and having a trucking company or having 300 head of cattle and selling uh, 280 calves a year. They can't grasp these things. It's real simple. It's how people prosper. And it's also why people don't prosper. They don't understand these laws of business that's taught at Case Western Reserve or Harvard or wherever. And, and you can learn these things. And let me tell you, you get a college education being around Andy, Liron, Nathan, and Gay. I'm not kidding you. These folks are intelligent. They know their stuff. And I'm, 
I'm just amazed. I'm, I've got to drop this in now. I'm amazed how many people will spend college debt like crazy and come out of college and not make much money at all. And yet they won't pay $2,900 to join a program. Gay and I paid $5,000 to join a mastermind group a couple of years ago. Right. And we sat in San Diego, California. Gay, I got to tell this. I'm sitting on one side of the room. Gay is on the other side of the room. And we're all in there for three days, swapping ideas. We paid five grand to be in this group just to privately shut the door and all of us learn from each other. There's no telling how much money I made off being in that group. But see, a lot of people go, ooh, I wouldn't pay that at all. Well, you don't understand the law of the harvest. You don't understand sowing and reaping. Right. You've got to sow before you reap. Gay sitting on the other side of this room, and listen to this. This is powerful. Gay setting up, and I like to warn people when I'm going to say something powerful. So this is the one. This is powerful. So Gay sitting on the other side of the room, and she says, the one thing, she's speaking to everybody in there. She's like E.F. Hutton. She's real quiet, doesn't say much. But when she does, everybody listens. So she's sitting in there, and she says, let me remind everybody in this room, we are all buyers. Let me repeat, we are all buyers. We make our money buying. And everybody, and I'm not kidding you folks, I'm not being trite here, I'm serious. I'm talking people that were selling lots of volume. They were all, everybody looked at each other and went, wow, that's it. That's what we do. You gotta learn the difference between nickel work and dollar work. Okay. Nickel work is the prepping and the shipping and the paperwork. And there's a certain amount that has to be done, especially if you're new in this business. But dollar work comes from buying. That's where your money is. And that $5,000 we spent to, to be in that course, when she made that comment about we are buyers, the impact that made on my wife was tremendous. It was worth the cost of the whole program was just to hear her say we are buyers. And because truly that's what we are. So as we started doing RA and we started working this, we learned more and more how to time things. Like when Kohl's would run a 30% off, she, she had five Kohl's stores within a driving distance that she would go work with her 30% off. And her specialty was working in women's garments. Now, obviously I'm not going to do that, but she would go into the women's undergarment area and she would come back home and Sandy can tell you, she used to prep it bags and bags and bags of this stuff. And she would get this stuff clearanced with 30% off. And I just gave some of you a gold nugget there, right there. But you've got to learn that. Yeah. Uh, we would even, we would even stay in hotels occasionally. Uh, there's times we stayed in hotels separately. She'd stay in a hotel and I would be in a hotel because she was capitalizing on these 30% off coupons at Kohl's. And it, and it worked just tremendous. And then as time went on, we were doing this. I started wanting to do more OA work because I was more strapped to home and couldn't leave at time. So I started buying lists. Well, here's what I ran into on lists. This is funny, but it's the truth. I would subscribe to these lists and I would see other people in our group or other groups. They'd say, yeah, I'm on John Doe's list, but I went two days in a row and I didn't find anything on that list. And I'm like, yeah, but we're only spending a hundred dollars a month, $150 a month, $199 a month for this list. Do y'all expect to make a thousand dollars every day off this list? Of course, I didn't say that, but in my mind, some people's expectations do not match reality. You know, that year that Gay had that goal of paying her house off her 80,000 mortgage, notice her goal wasn't to make a million dollars that year. Right. Some people's goal setting uh, understanding is lopsided. They don't understand how to set reasonable goals, achieve reasonable uh, outcome. They don't know how to do that. Well, we started working this and doing this and I wanted to do OA lists. So I started buying lists and I'm here to tell you that every single list that I ever invested into made me money. Right now we're moving more toward PL. We have uh, just went over $2 million in sales, all of it RA and OA. Um, we have, we're 1.9 something in just FBA sales in our merchant sales and our eBay sales put us over the 2 million mark. And I kind of secretly had this goal that when we got there, I wanted to move forward private label. So as I started doing these lists, like I said, at one time I was on 12 lists. I, I, I knew that these lists would work if you'd learn how to work these lists. These lists allowed me, I can open a list sometimes and in two minutes time, I can understand. Uh, thank you, Gay. I can understand in two minutes time if there's anything on that list that I want to buy. And I can just go right on. And then sometimes you open a list. And when you open a list, 
it can take you an hour to fulfill everything on that list that you want to buy. But I'm just amazed that some people are, are, are just so cynical. I'm just not, and I've, I've trained hundreds of people. I hired 78 insurance agents one year myself. Um, and, and I'm just amazed at people that just, again, I go back to, it's like they have AIDS. They have an attitude in a destructive state. They're just so infected that if it's a, if it's a cool, breezy day, they'll say something along the lines of, yeah, it won't last long. It'll be hot before you know it. Instead of just enjoying the cool, breezy day, you're immediately right. ruin it. Okay. Bad times are coming. Well, I'm not wired up like that and you won't make me that way. And my family hasn't been able to make me that way. I'm going to be optimistic and the Lord's prospered me that way. And I'm thankful for that. I, I, I do believe it works and I'm a, I'm a firm believer that it works. Actually, um, let me, let me jump into something here that I, that I want to cover. It needs to be covered at this point because if I don't do this, I'll feel bad. And if I'm going to give my time to do this, I need to somewhat enjoy it myself. Here's a, here's a little biblical teaching and you can jot some notes on this if, if any of you are inclined to that may help you. In Ecclesiastes 11, chapter 4th verse, it says, He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. And in essence, what that's saying there is if you go out and you look at the wind, like I'm looking outside now and the wind is blowing this tree. If you go out there and go, oh, wind's blowing, can't sow. But if you go out there and go, oh, there's clouds, I, I can't be reaping. You're never going to sow and you're never going to reap because there's always going to be wind and there's always going to be clouds. Now, that was Old Testament. Now, let's jump over to the New Testament, give you a little something to, to ponder on here. I'm going to read two verses in the Bible, which has been read a billion times. You've heard it. But this next verse after the, I want you to catch. Here we go. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I've also I've always been amazed at how many people read that verse negatively. I was raised with people that read that verse, or would read that verse, and they'd say, "Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap." And they had such a negative view of that. Instead of the, you ever, we ever stop and think that maybe the good Lord sets up in heaven and goes, y'all are totally misunderstanding what I inspired them people to write. That is not what I meant because some people, their filter is so clogged up. They just can't see optimism. Well, listen to the next verse. The next verse says, for he that soweth to his flesh shall love the flesh, reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall love the spirit, reap life everlasting. We've all heard that, right? But here's the verse. The next verse People conveniently leave out because they want to be cynical. Listen to verse 9. The very next verse says, And let us not be weary in well-doing. Listen, listen. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Folks, that is positive. God was trying to lay down a positive message for you and I to live by spiritually and naturally. I believe everything in the Bible is twofold, written both ways. And I'm telling you, it says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The Old Testament said, if you regard the wind and the clouds, you'll not sow or reap. The New Testament says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You've got to not faint. You've got to believe in these things that Gay and Andy and Leron and Nathan and other people in their group, you've got to believe these things are doing. You've got to have the faith and you've got to understand if you will do it time in and time out, you will prosper. But if you faint, if you ever read the book, Acres of Diamonds, Acres of Diamonds is about a true story about a man that was mining and mining and mining and mining and mining and he couldn't find it. So he sells this parcel of ground uh, for just pennies because he couldn't find the diamonds. And after he was gone, another person came in and found, had he just went a few inches more, he would have hit, true story, one of the largest diamond mines ever in history. And then there was another man that did the same thing in California with a gold mine. He sold it for pennies after mining it for years. And I think it took like five or six more hits with a, with a pick and they discovered gold. Folks, these are true stories. I'm telling you the truth. And you've got to be inspired by the truth of optimism. 
There is massive truth in optimism and it's there. And all of these buttons and tools and everything that gay tells you to do or push, they're not going to work if you don't believe they're going to work. Let me tell you something else. I've been swarmed by people in this business. They came into this business and said, well, I'll try it. And then if it works, then I'll really, I'll really, no, mm -mm, you can't do that. I'm going to tell you right now, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. When my wife was, was scanning products and she would call us and say, should I buy two or should I buy three? That's sowing sparingly. Right. So I'd have to tell her, buy them all. She'd say, buy them all. There's 30 of them. Buy them all. If it ranks and it's profitable, buy it all. And when she learned to develop it, let me tell you this true story. I was in Paducah, Kentucky on the way back home, stopped in Princeton, Kentucky at Walmart. I'm going to do some RA and it's a true story. Not that I've been lying the rest of the time, but this really is true. <laughs> this, there was this huge tub of these video games and Sandy could tell in the chat. Yes, that's true. Cause she <laughs> process them. There was this huge tub of video game and had a sign on it. $9 and I believe it's $9.99. cents. So I go to the store manager and I told him, I said, I'll buy all the video games you've got in that tub for $5. And he said, no, I can't do that. So we chat in a little bit and he said, you know, there's probably thousand video games in there, 800,000 plus video games. I said, yeah, and I'll buy them all for $5. Now, if they're already marked less than $5, I want them for what they're marked at. But if they're marked over five, they have to be $5. But I will buy all the video games you have in this entire store for $5. He said, even if it's, I said, I don't care what the number is. I'll buy everything you've got for $5. So he said, okay, we'll do it. So I had to go buy totes. It took us three and a half hours to check them out because they had to take them all out of these steel cases. I brought them home. Sandy organized them all out, prepped them, shipped them, sent them in. I made a small fortune off that. We've done just numerous buys, numerous deals like that. But folks, here's the key. You've got to be an optimist to do that. And I'm just telling you the truth. There is no other way around it. You just have to be an optimist like that. So we started using the list. The list were a huge success, made a lot of money doing it. Um, would highly recommend people invest in lists. It's a great way to set home, go through products. But you need to understand, you might have two or three or four days go by that you don't find anything on there that really floats your boat. Or it could be every day. I'm just real picky. So for me, it could be two or three days. And then boom, make a thousand bucks in one day. That's all it takes. But, but you can't be one of those that go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You know, you can't, if you do that, you're not going to be successful at anything. I got to tell you that. If you're that cynical, that negative, you will not prosper at anything. So we did the OA list and the RA started going down. Uh, Sandy moved on to bigger and better things. So we wasn't able to continue to utilize her uh, prepping and shipping. She's now in the business doing it herself. We're now moving toward private label. I've taken Andy's uh, course, love his private label course, highly recommended to everybody. I met Andy one time. Uh, he was getting coffee in Las Vegas last year at the ASD convention. And I stepped up beside him and elbowed him and uh, introduced myself to him. And of course he knew me from Facebook and we chatted and I, I, he's just such a genuinely nice person. He's not a fake bone in his body. Uh, you may watch him on some of the videos and think he's whatever. This guy is as real as cornbread. He's down to earth. He loves life. He loves people. And uh, he's really been an inspiration to me and, and to a lot of people. And I know that's why Gay signed up with his and got in connection with him because they're just genuinely good people. Now, I want to rattle through so I don't run out of time. I want to rattle through five things. It won't take me just a few minutes rattled through five things that I believe successful people do or have. So you can jot these things down or on the replay, you can take time to uh, rattle them back. I'm going to go through them rather fast, which I know we don't have a lot of time. So here they, here they go. Number one, five things successful people have or do that help them be successful at this business or any business. <clears throat> Number one, they are inherently optimistic. People that are successful are the kinds of people that would go after Moby Dick in a rowboat and take the tartar sauce with them. They truly are the kinds of people that see a glass half full, not half empty. They are the kinds of people that see God as a forgiver and a blesser and a merciful, not mean with a hatchet hanging over them. And I'm going to get you. Uh, they're just inherently optimistic and they approach things optimistically. I had met them from the trucking business. I was in, 
had a farm, had cattle at one time. I've met them that raised cattle that were like that. I live pretty close to some large grain farmers now. If you get around them, they're laughing, they're talking, they're optimistic. People that are successful are just naturally optimistic. And I encourage you to try it. It does work. Number two, people that are successful understand the concept of sowing and reaping. And I read you those biblical verses a few minutes ago. If you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. You can't go out to Walmart and buy two products that both will give you 100% ROI and expect to make a thousand bucks. You can't do that. You've got to buy all 10 or 20 of them. If you see a whole end cap at Walmart of these little swim pools and they're marked down to two bucks and it's January, trust me, in just a few weeks, those things are going to be selling like crazy. Buy them all. And that's our philosophy when we do any RAN is when we see stuff that ranks properly, we do buy them all. And just this week, she had to go, actually it was the day before yesterday, she had to run to Walmart to get some stuff. So she did a little RA and while she was there, she sends me a thing and she says, here's this particular Star Wars thing and they cost $25 or selling for 73. Uh, how many of them should I buy? I, I sent her back a funny little emoticon like, I can't believe you're asking me that. She says, okay, I'll buy them all. So she bought them all. And it was 20 some of them and they're 25 bucks each. They're selling for $73. Uh, it's something like 60% ROI. That's and people that are successful. They just understand sowing and reaping. And, and I'm not meaning to talk down to nobody. I, I'm not college educated, but I've made a good income in my lifetime. So I'm not talking down to nobody, but some of you, you're not understanding that if you plant corn, you get corn. You somehow know the thing, Ooh, there must be some secret sauce. You know, McDonald's had to, for years and years, they had the big Mac. So millions of them and everybody wondered, what is that secret sauce? And finally it got re revealed that it's basically Thousand Island sauce. That's what the secret sauce was. There is no secret sauce. There is no shortcut to success. You simply have to take the stairs. The elevator to the top is out of order. You have to take the stairs. You have to learn these steps to go up through there. And if you do, you'll prosper. So the number two thing is people that are successful, they understand sowing and reaping. Number three, this is big, and you're not going to hear very many motivational speakers talk about this. Zig Ziglar was a, a man that I got to know. Of course, he's dead now, sadly. And Zig, I, went, I was able to go with him and a group of other people to Israel for 100 days. I, I mean, 100 people to Israel for two weeks. Uh, got to go down to Egypt and see King Tut's tomb and so on. So I had a chance to be around Zig and, and his lovely wife, Jean, for some time. I, I was in his home uh, twice. He invited us there. I'm not name dropping. I'm just telling you, I was around perhaps one of the most optimistic people I've ever met. But I was sitting in Zig's house. There was a group of us, about seven of us sitting there. And Zig was not trying to motivate us. And I was about 21 years old, 22. And Zig said something was powerful. He said, I do want to give all of you one piece of advice. And it's number three on this list. It probably should be number one. He said, learn how to trudge. Um, it is so true. Many of you out there think that people like Gay or I or Andy or Laurent or Nathan or, or Steve or Craig or Colleen or any of these other people that we know that we're friends with, Ralph, you may think we're all up all the time. We're not. A lot of times we're very down and out, but we still trudge. A lot of times we don't feel like doing it, but we still do it. Let me tell you something about emotions. Emotions are dangerous. And some of you may be living your entire life by emotions. Lust is an emotion. Anger is an emotion. Hate is an emotion. All of the greed is an emotion. All of these are emotions gone awry. So you better be careful living your whole life on emotion. You better learn the good emotions and go with those. The bad emotions, you use logic to try to kill them or they will get you in prison, they'll ruin you, they'll wipe you out financially. So understand, emotions are like waves on a beach. You can get out there and be walking around, they're so sweet and pretty, but you let a storm come in, and those waves kick up. And those same waves you think are so pretty, they'll smash you into the rocks and cut you all to pieces. That's what emotions are. Good emotions are nice to wade in. Bad emotions will crush you on the rocks of life. So you need to learn to not be so emotionally driven and learn how to be a little bit more logical in a lot of your approaches. And you'll, you'll learn how to trudge. I do what needs to be done even when I don't feel like doing it. When I'm depressed or down and out or there's problems in my life or in my family, I don't let it affect my productivity. 
I continue to do what needs to be done, even if I don't feel good. And that's a big, 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 big ingredient to long-term success. It's really easy to get fired up, motivated for about 30 days, you know, and then you run into some returns or you have some problems and you get depressed and wiped out. You can't be that way. You can get depressed, but you don't get wiped out. You can get your teeth kicked and you go buy dentures. You get your legs cut off, you go buy a wheelchair. I don't care what problems in life you've got, you got to learn to overcome it. Because I'm telling you, the only helping hands you'll ever get is at the end of your own sleeve. If it's to be, it's up to me. And you've got to understand that learning how to trudge is something that successful people do. You know, Andy was posting here a while back, uh, him and Steven Peterson had rented a warehouse together. What Andy didn't know was I loved watching all those videos. They were putting pallet racks up. They were doing all this. That's trudgery. They rented this warehouse. They're putting pallet racks up. They got a tow motor. That's trudgery, right? That's not exciting, but that's what successful people do. They trudge and they get these things done so that they can prosper. And then when they do, they're happy and they're giddy. And, and you think, gosh, they're up and positive all the time. No, they're not. Fourth thing, write this down, is they learn the tools to develop the art. I'm amazed at people, Gay, that go through your courses or other courses, and they want to skip all the tools and go straight to the art. They just want to go out and start buying a lot of stuff without knowing if it ranks or how profitable it is, or even if they're ungated or can sell it. And then when they uh, company, you can't sell it or you're restricted in it, because I read people's posts on Facebook, and they'll say, I bought this without knowing if I could sell it. And I'm going, oh, my goodness, you can't do that. Yeah, that's part of learning the tools, developing the art. That's what master artists do. That's what uh, great architects do. And, you know, one of the tools is your phone, your mouse on your computer. These are all tools. Inventory lab. Right. Your, we use Profit Bandit, uh, right. Eagle. Just, you got to learn all these tools. And when you learn all these tools, you can do it just like that. It's just second nature. My wife can go into Walmart or Kohl's now. because She don't even have to think about it. She can just bam, 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 thinking about the grandkids, talking to the grandkids on the phone, just do her thing and come out of there with stuff to sell that we make money on. So you learn the tools and then you develop the art. But here's the other part of it. There are people gay my dear friend, that want to learn all the tools, but they never develop the art. That's right. And I see these people, they're constantly dependent upon the tools right. and they don't ever develop an art for it. They, you have a real art for it. I seen you take products that were not listed on Amazon at all. So there's no rank to look at. That's artistic. You take that product, you put it on there, you become the only seller of it. You make tens of thousands of dollars doing that. That's artistic. That's not a tool. So you got to learn the tools and develop the art of what you're doing, whether it's cattle, trucking, a school teacher, whatever. You learn the tools, you develop the art. That's step number four. And step number five, and I left it as fifth because I, I'm going to pretty, pretty well stop talking after this, except to answer questions or whatever. But step number five is perhaps the biggest one. You ready? Here it goes. Step number five is people who are successful can trust other people. They can even trust strangers. I actually know a biblical story, and I've got to tell you this. It's about a rich young ruler, and his name was Nicodemus. Nicodemus had a personal conversation with Jesus Christ, looked him right into the eye, and Christ told him what he must do to be born again. And the Bible says that Nicodemus, I'm not reading it word for word right now. I didn't print it off. But if my memory is correct, word for word, it says something pretty close to he went away sorrowful. So my point is, there are people that were set in a, in a church house their entire life and hear the gospel preached and never, ever believe it. Why? Because it's going through a filter of cynicism. Right. It's going through a filter of negativism and they don't believe it. There's people in this group. There's people in Andy's group. And the reason I'm telling you this is if this is you, this is your life raft, or this is your helicopter. This is your warning. You're going to drown. You're going to drown in the sea of despair if you don't understand that cynicism and negativism is what's keeping you from prosperity. It's what's keeping you from having a better life. If, you have, if you're just inbred with this, all your conversations with your spouse are argumentative. All your conversations with your teenagers are argumentative. If you look at a church house, there's all the sinners and the hypocrites there without realizing you're one too for judging them. 
I mean, when you, when you operate like that, everything in life is miserable to you. And you look at people like Gay or me or Andy and you go, yeah, you're lucky. Lucky? I've had seven surgeries. I've had to overcome some major childhood trauma. You tell me I'm lucky? I had to sell insurance door to door on commission. Would you? I'm not lucky. I'm hardworking and I'm blessed. There is a difference. It isn't luck. It's hard work and it's blessed. So the fifth and perhaps the most important one, again, is people that are prosperous, they trust people. They trust Andy. They trust Gay. They trust Leron. They trust Nathan. They trust people. Therefore, they can learn. When you don't trust, you can't learn. Your filter is so stopped up. You can't learn. Everything goes to this filter of, well, why are you telling me that? Well, you're just trying to make $199. And if, it, and if you think that way, you are shooting holes in your own boat and then laughing at the whole time going, yeah, boy, I bet they're trying to do this or I bet they're trying. Come on. You know, and I know a lot of people like that. That's why I'm saying it. And it just blows my mind. And they're the first people that go to the mailbox to get their check because they think Uncle Sam's going to make them prosperous. But yet they'll look at other people that's succeeding and go, well, they, they must be lucky. They, they're not lucky. They work hard and they're blessed. So in wrap, wrap, wrapping this up on my end, I'll tell you this. What profiteth a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And since I'm doing this free of charge and I'm not getting paid, and nobody gave me no script, I end by telling you the richest person you can ever be is a person that can lay down his eyelids in death and wake them up in glory. And that's what I hope everybody here does. So, Gay, thanks for giving me the mic for a few minutes to share, and I hope it was able to perhaps be a life raft or a helicopter to somebody. Wow, 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 wow. Um, Geez, I wish we could hear everybody just blowing up Facebook Live and applauding how true this is. People who are successful trust other people, even strangers. People who are successful in Amazon trust the Amazon platform. People who are successful as farmers trust the soil. Mm -hmm. It's not a personal thing. And over and over again, we say, and we try to try to really get into your emotions and your heart your, your mind saturated with the thought that what you put in is what you're going to get out. But if you put it in correctly, learning the tools, mastering the art, you're going to get exponentially far more than you ever asked for. He's talking about trudging. I was trudging the day that I'm trudging through my basement and there's, there's product piled up in the corner that my supplier didn't even know what it was. I didn't even know what it was and literally just felt a tap on the shoulder was like something with that. And that product literally paid off my mortgage in one year. So there's value in these things that he's saying, you know, some of you are like going, um, well, I really thought he was going to show me how to be successful as an Amazon seller. I'm going to say this. If, if you, if you walk away from here and are a failure in Amazon selling, you have, you have violated every one of the five points that he gave you. Because honestly, you've got to trust the platform. You've got to trudge. That means pick up your phone, get out there and scan in the stores, open your list, Look at the list, let it lead you down rabbit trails wherever you need to go to buy those products, get them in, learn learning the the tools, and then mastering that where it's just second nature. You know, I guarantee you that if Gary and I both went into a store together, we would come out with armloads of products. Yeah. Because we honestly believe that wherever we go, there yeah. are armloads of products available to us. We honestly believe that it's not it's not a matter of of as he said luck it's just a matter of believing because for us it has happened so many times yeah it has happened yeah. so many times and we don't ever say well it happened already five times so it probably won't happen again we say it's happened already five times so it'll probably happen 55 times <laughs> We're ready to ramp it up 
that's why I appreciate Gary so much. You know, it's, it's, people are blowing up the uh, uh, blowing up the chat right now, Gary. They're saying, "Wow, it's such a blessing. Thank you so much." Got it. Got it. <laughs> They're saying, "Amazing. Thank you." Another one saying, "Gary, it's so beautiful. I'm appreciative. God bless. Wow, that was awesome. I'll be listening and taking action." over and over reaping and harvesting thanks 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 so much you know you know here's the thing is uh, you know i said the other day on a on a webinar if there was any way i could you know take a take a head opener and open your head and pour this in i would do it but it's got to get all the way down into your emotions yeah. because a lot of times we'll move from emotions when mm -hmm. we won't move from our brain where you know it is so, yeah. so our emotions are telling us you know, one thing and our brain is telling us another, but we've got to move. We've got to move. And we say over and over again in the business, money in motion. You've got to keep your money in motion. You can't sit on that $100 you made or that $1,000 you made or that $10,000 you made and say, oh my gosh, I can't venture that anymore because what if I lose it? Well, the instant you say that, you've entered into that quagmire that Gary's already talked about. Gary, let me, let me jump in here and say this. I pulled up on Inventory Lab this morning, and I could actually send you a snippet of this right now to show it if there's any doubters out there. I'll be happy to show it to prove it. But we, the, the $2 million that we sold, uh, or have sold so far, what, how much money did we spend to do that? I can show you on our Inventory Lab that our cost of goods is 929,000. Now immediately many of you are going, you spent 929,000? Nope, here's what we did. Come on. When I got into this business, this is, this is what we did. I took $50,000 and put it into a separate account for us to spend on product in this business. The most we ever spent, including the big buys that we made with Gay, at the time that we made them, because I made some other big buys too. But the most I ever spent out of that 50 was an entire total of 27,000. Come on. So $27,000 yes, rolled. Yes, exactly. But folks, this isn't new to me. I mean, this is, this is farming 101. Come you on. Buy a cow, it has a calf. You keep the cow and calf, and if that's a steer, you sell it and buy a heifer back into replacement. You now have two. If it's a heifer, you keep it. And it's how. There, there's a, there's used to be an old mathematical thing that would say, I'll go to work for you and do anything you want me to do for a penny a day. And you double it every day for 30 days. Will you hire me? I'll do anything you want me to do. Doesn't matter what it is for a penny a day. You double it every day for 30 days. Will you do it? Let me show you how much money that gets up to. I can't go all the way to 30, but I'm going to show you what the first day of pennies, second day, two pennies, four pennies, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8182, 16,364, 32,728, 65,456, 130,912, 261,824. And at the time you get to the end of 30 days, it is something like for that 30th day, you have to pay me something like three or four hundred thousand dollars or something like that just for that one day's work. That's how you take a penny a day, double it every day for 30 days. You can take money in this business and let it roll and let it grow. We sold two million dollars and never spent more than twenty seven thousand. And that was that twenty seven thousand came within about the first five or six months. By then product was there and at one time, Gay, we had uh, you may have still been uh, you and I may have still been in the other group at that time because I remember Zach put it on that group. At one time, we had $107,000 worth of product inventory at Amazon, but yet the most that I'd ever spent out of pocket was 27,000. And after about five or six months, that started going down because we had made all that money back right. and we were just totally buying off of profit from that point right. on. So right. just to understand these law of numbers and how they grow exponentially, because I can truly show you right now my cost of goods, what it was. And I can tell you the most we ever spent and it was spent in the first five or six months because when the money started coming in, we didn't have to spend it. That's right. That's right. That's how, you know, a lot of people, when they hear our stories, Gary, they're like, Oh, that can't be possible. Cause once you spend it, it's gone because that's how they've lived their lives. You know, yeah. they get, they, they go to work a day world and they get their salary and then once they spend it, it's gone. It truly is gone. You know, they bought, you know, they bought their stuff, 
you know, and stuff doesn't, you know, that's, that's, that's not getting them anything. They bought their new TV. There's so many people at Walmart right now that are lined up to get their tax uh, yeah. uh, back, their, their tax refund back so they can buy a new TV, which will get them nothing. Nothing. So when they get money, it does go out and it does stay out. It never comes back. So they hear stories like ours. And I say things like, you know, uh, they'll say things like, well, how much does it cost to start your business? And I'll say, I don't know. I started with a $2 cookbook and they think I'm telling a lie and I'm not telling a lie. I started with a $2 cookbook that sold for $89. So the $89 now I roll into inventory and that $89 becomes $372. So you see what I'm saying is you've got to make sure you believe the system, believe the platform, believe the soil, and believe us when we say we're not anything special. We we're, we're not breaking any any uh, speed records here. In in we're we're not we're not. Uh, I'm, I have a gifted son. I know what his IQ is, and and he would make us all look pretty silly. But um, <clears throat> he, he still can't walk across to the grocery store by himself, and he's thirty. So. <laughs> So, you know, I'm the one that's out there trudging and I'm the one that's out there putting those things in motion. And Gary's proving that to you, adding his voice to mine, adding my voice and Gary's voice to Andy, adding our voice to Leron and others who have literally seen Amazon revolutionize their lives, revolutionize our, our mind, will, and emotions because Literally, it's a mathematical equation. You put this in, and this is what's going to come out. So many times I hear people say, okay, my goal this year is $100,000 in sales. Then I look at the back end of their account. So sometimes we do that. We do account review. And they have like uh, 62 products. They have 62 SKUs in there. 62 SKUs, and they're waiting for those 62 SKUs to sell before they do anything else. They will never reach that goal. Never, ever no, reach that won't. goal. You've got to push it in. They You've won't. got to push product in right after the next product, right after the next product, and trust the math. Trust that. I, I you know, I can't, I can't, it, it just gets me so excited every time that Gary speaks because <laughs> he's just, I mean, he's just like throwing down lightning bolts of gold, you know? He's just like wham, 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 throwing down lightning bolts of gold. And it just gets me so fired up again. And I don't want to add anything to what he said because he, he has done it so well. Um, well. Jay, let me throw this in. I need to add a little money advice in here. There was a man, I, I read his books years ago. He's deceased now. He died of cancer. His name was Larry Burkett. And he was wow. one of the very first uh, Christian financial counselors. And he was the Dave Ramsey before there was a Dave Ramsey. And Larry Burkett says there's three ways you use money in your lifetime. And Sandy, I know I shared this with your brother CJ years ago, and, and he's often referenced back and thanked me for that. But there's three ways people spend money. The number one way that you can spend money or use money is you use it for necessities. That's rent, shelter, food, clothing. Right. Number two is you use luxuries um, for, or use money for luxuries. Believe it or not, eating out is a luxury. Mm -hmm. A cell phone or excessive things mm -hmm. like that are often luxuries. They're not necessities. Right. The younger generation may think they're necessities. They're really not. So number two is luxuries. Going to the movies is a luxury. Buying higher price clothing is a luxury. And number three way to use money is use it as a tool to make more money. Come on. People that get ahead use money as a tool to make more money. Come on. They don't. I recently was, was on a blog, uh, an Amazon blog, and I seen this guy right in there. And he was new and he wanted to make a million dollars in four years. And then he was going to kick back and never work again. And then this guy got busted by people telling him, my friend, you will never succeed with that kind of mindset. If you've got a mindset of, I want to make money so that I can never work again. Prosperous, successful people don't think like that. No. They think of, I can make money and I can take bigger vacations, more uh -huh. people with me. I can pay for my grandchildren's college education. I can buy a nicer home. But they never look at making money as a way to be lazy. 
And that's something that kind of grates on my nerves. I don't believe in that. In the Bible, when it said man make his living by the sweat of his brow, I believe if you prosper, you just use that prosperity to work more and do more with it. I don't believe you use that to kick back and be lazy. I don't think it's biblical, and I have not seen too many people in life, Jeff Bezos or anybody else, follow that kind of mindset. So remember those three ways to use money, necessities, luxuries, and as a tool to make more money. Come and on. some of you need to trim back your luxuries in order to have more money right. as a tool to make more money. That's and that's right. what a farmer does with cattle. That's what a guy who wants to start a trucking company does by buying more dump trucks. He uses his profit, turns it back into the business to make more money. He uses tool, uses money as a tool to make more money. And with that, I guess I'll hush. That's right. So Ken is saying, very informative, awesome webinar. Love the scriptures and the webinar. Chris Holly saying great info. Tracy, very encouraging. Michelle, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Gary and Gay. Elizabeth saying awesome, very encouraging and wise. We have lots of other people who are watching and uh, not leaving comments there because they're a little shy. Here's another one coming in. Both very special. Thank you. You know what? That's the thing, Lori, is, and, and if Gary and I can get this across, we're really not very special. We're fairly regular. You know, Gary and I, uh, we have a dream and a hope. We have a hope and a future. And and this is the dream that Gary and I have. We're going to, when you get through life and, and, uh, and hear the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And then Gary and I are going to do one thing that we, we literally just, uh, it's like taking drugs. We infuse ourselves with this, this vision, and this is as real as the nose on my face, is we're going to sit down beside the Crystal River. We are. And we're going to sing every one of the gospel hymns we know. We we're are. Gonna sing it together because me and Gary love to sing. And so we're going to sing it together. We're going to sit down beside that river and we're going to sing. But until we get to that crystal river, we're going to do all of these things that Gary has said. We're going to we're going to put all five of those principles to work because there is joy in working the work and seeing that result. And then another level of joy when you can impart that to someone else, there's just a whole, it's like, um, for me, that's why I said, you know, starting the group was, it's like good medicine, you know, and it's like a good drug to me because when I, when I see somebody get a hold of that and they write and create their success story, it is as exciting to me as having, you know, that buy where I got the one product that's paid off the mortgage in one year. Or what you're going to see in 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 uh, us paying off the mortgage for this new place in one year, and so th it's just the same kind of thing that joy that comes with it that Gary and I it just uh, infuse each other every once in a while. I'll send him a line to one of the hymns, or he'll send me a line to him, and we'll and we'll be singing it in our head all day the rest of the day because yeah. our hearts are the same. You know that's why I said he's my little brother. And uh, always taller than me and bigger than me. He's he's uh, he's my little baby brother, and I love him so. And and he's just poured out his heart to you today. And I hope that you will get a hold of this. If you're in Andy's main group, Amazing Freedom Group, and you're like, I'm not even sure why I'm here. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know anything about RA retail arbitrage, OA online arbitrage. I don't know anything about wholesale. I don't know anything about selling on Amazon. You can jump on the link and get in our group and we're going to just sweep you along with us if you'll let us yeah. and speak into you if you'll let us and see your life change the same way our lives have changed because we just believe these principles and live these principles. Gary, I appreciate your, your time. We're so out of time. Um, there's uh, other comments coming in. For us newbies, um, oh, Chris is going to ask a real specific question. Uh, Gary, what repricer do you use? We use App Eagle. Uh, okay. We App Eagle. just started with it, and that's the one we use. There may be better ones out there, but that's what we use. And we have different, uh, my wife handles all that part. She has different uh, formulas, I guess you'd call them, or strategies. And depending on what she wants to do, each product gets a strategy. And she does that every night. If we enter product of the daytime or if she enters product of the daytime, like when Sandy was doing, Sandy would enter of the nighttime, she sets down 10 or 15 minutes. Each one of that's the products beautiful. gets assigned a strategy. Right. And so that's what we use, App Eagle. 
Awesome, and App Eagle is very user friendly. We have other comments coming in real quick. Um, Pam said, thank you, Gary and Gabe, very enlightening, motivational. I have to watch this again to make notes of all those great nuggets. Do that, do that. Let this go deep in you. Thanks so much, Michelle says. Michelle, uh, appreciate your time. Thanks again. Amy says, I'm gonna have to listen to this again. It's so inspiring. And that's what we want because we want to propel you forward as you're uh, walking through uh, your time with Amazon. We are so out of time. Appreciate you so much, Gary. If you guys you're have welcome. questions, you're welcome to uh, jump on in the group and ask questions. If you're in the Amazing Freedom Group and you're watching this from the Amazing Freedom Group, we appreciate you so much. Uh, you can reach out to me and uh, I can put you in touch with Gary too. Try not to blow up his personal messages too much because the man has a lot on his plate and we appreciate your time so much. Gary, big hug. Big hug. hug. You and all your, especially to anybody out there that may be hurting or at the end of the rope. If you're at the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. Don't ever let go. Don't ever give up. And I always trust and believe life can be better and implement these five steps. And if you do, I guarantee you live in the best time that's ever been in world history. This is a great time to succeed. So uh, all my love to everybody out there. Sure hope I wasn't too hard on anybody, but if I don't tell you, perhaps nobody else will. So that was the goal. Come on, thank you. We appreciate everyone so much. Thanks for being on the webinar today. All, all of you go and prosper with some seed in the ground. Bye. <laughs>